Hi, my name is Chris Caesar. I'm a landscape photographer based out of my gallery here in York. Over the past few months, I've been running a short series of videos highlighting the papers from the Council on Infinity Fine Art range of photographic media. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a product called BFK Reeve White. This is from the Arsh Paper Mill. And if you go back a couple of videos, you'll see that I did a presentation on a paper called BFK Reeve Pure White, which is a, a pure white matte archival paper made without the inclusion of any optical brightening agents. So it's quite groundbreaking. This is the sister product to that one. And this is the white version, which is slightly warmer, but still quite a high white content. OK, so what I thought we'd do is have a look at three or four images that might help you see how this paper might fit into your workflow and what kind of options it's going to give you when you're deciding how to put your work down on paper. So a little bit about the paper. The paper is pure cotton rag, matte, slightly silky feel to it, and it has a textured surface. It's not massively textured. It's a little bit more than slightly textured. It's like a, a very slight orange peel effect. Um, it's a mold made product which gives it great stability, feels fantastic, and it's going to work well whether you're just mounting it, popping it in a box, framing it for an exhibition display, something along those lines. So it's a beautiful paper to handle and to work with. So this is the first picture I'd like to show you today. This is a very, very detailed picture. Now, I have said in videos before that one of the key concerns is that if I use a paper, I want it to be able to display detail. I go to great lengths to try and capture detail. So I'd like the paper to at least show what I've managed to capture. In this picture, you can see we've got a sort of waterfall scene here in the Yorkshire Dales. And we've got the water running through the image to this area in the foreground. And the leaves are, that are on these rocks in the foreground run right through the image to the trees at the back. So in these leaves, we've got lots of detail. And we've also got lots of detail on these exposed rocks in the stream. There's also lots of detail in these trees with all the sort of branches, the small branches and the veins and things on the leaves themselves. So it's quite a, an interesting picture to when we, when we come to think about printing it because we really need a paper that's going to be able to show those crisp lines. And I can tell you that this looks absolutely fantastic on the BFK Reeve White. So the detail here in the leaves, um, which I'll try and show you now by just only have a little close up you can see that the detail is there. And if we just have a look through to the trees and the sort of leaves mid to mid ground, you can see it's still full of detail. So the paper's handling detail exceptionally well. It's a lovely warm image because of the warmth in the leaves. And I feel as though the paper's handling the colors absolutely superbly. So that is a detailed image that this paper can handle. The next image we'll have a look at is slightly different. This is a picture that was made one morning up in Scotland. And this one, it's got a lot of detail in it. It's got these lovely sort of reeds in the foreground and the rocks and the detail of the hills in the background. But this one has more open space. So in this image, we've got these areas here of the sky and the sort of re the repeated blue color that's in between the grasses and the water. And I always, these are the images that I normally kind of look at differently to perhaps the last photograph that we've just seen. These images, because of the open spaces, they have elements that we have to be careful with. So do we want this open space to render absolutely flat on the finished photograph, on the print? If so, then let's use a pure smooth surface paper. Or do we want to add some kind of texture, a third element? to that space. The orange peel effect in this paper helps to put something in that space that just very slightly breaks it up a little. So it's no longer what some people might refer to as negative space, which obviously it isn't within this picture because it's all part of the composition and how this area is sort of echoed and repeated down here. And it allows these mountains to sit sort of almost reaching into that space, but it lets them sit there as the main subject without any distractions from a busy, heavy sky. But on this image, the orange peel effect, the slight texture in that sky really, really does help. 
and it kind of brings it to life a little bit. It doesn't destroy that sense of smoothness that's up there. It just somehow portrays it in a slightly different way. So if you've got images where you have a single color sky or maybe a, an area of water or waves where there's a predominance of a light color, this paper might be something to consider if you want to add an extra element to the finished result, which is almost like a 3D element. It almost gives it a third dimension by having that textured surface. Another image I thought I'd show you is this one. So this is similar to the last one in the sense that we've got a bit of a sky going on. Um, it's not a massively smooth sky, it's quite a busy sky. And this falls into another category for me. This is kind of where we get the chance as photographers to record something that ends up looking quite painterly. Um, so it's not hard to imagine this as a watercolour or an oil paint. And as such, I think this is where the textured papers really come in. If you have images like the last one we've just looked at, with a lot of smooth, bright areas, or anything that looks painterly, I feel that this stippled sort of slightly textured surface really really does help in the way that we want to show that work to others it does give it a certain feel you can't deny it so on the on a smooth matte paper this is going to look really really nice but on this paper there's that extra element so all these areas up here in the sky with this lovely sort of blue tone that was going on almost because it was quite overcast with obviously the sun bursting through just catching parts of the landscape but the the surface of the paper is really really helping me in that sky area but it's not detracting from these areas where sharpness and detail is critical for me to display this image when people are looking at it so we've got a great range of colors again here it handles the tonal range really well um, we've got shadow areas working well along with the highlights and it's an exceptional paper. One final image to show you. I thought I'd show you, because no doubt some of you are shouting, what about black and white? So here's a, a black and white image uh, that I made a couple of years ago down in London. Um, and this one is a good test for this paper because it's got very, very, very dense blacks. So this is down at Canary Wharf and it's a, a black and white conversion where I've sort of boosted the, the shadows somewhat. So we've got these very, very bright towers reaching into what was a very blue sky that's now a very dark sky. But the paper, bear in mind this is a, a, a matte paper, so you're already probably feeling a little bit guarded and thinking, oh, the mats can't do blacks. Well, these new papers from Canson Infinity, the Arsh paper range, the D-Max, which the D-Max is something that lets you know how much of a black a paper can display, basically. They have very, very high DMAX, so they're capable of showing extremely dense blacks. This looks absolutely gorgeous. This has had no extra processing done. This is how my file sits on the computer, and I just sent it to printer without making any adjustments via the printer. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with the level of darks in this picture. So these areas here, jet black, the clock, the surface, and contrasting that, it's handled the bright areas extremely well too. So there you have it. All in all, this is a fantastic all-round paper. Um, if you've got any areas where you want to incorporate a slight stippling, we'll call it, to add something, so in this area, it could be this black area here in this picture, um, then this might be a good paper to go to. And it's certainly worthy of adding it to your inventory because it will give you other options on certain types of images or indeed every image. So that's it, that's the BFK Reeve White, another um, winner in my opinion. I'm really enjoying using it and there's work already on display in the gallery that's been made on this paper. So until the next one, take care and stay safe.